Hey guys, so um, lately I've been in such a like a Maiden mood, and since Maiden's one of my all-time favorite bands, and um, Steve Harris, um, he just has his birthday today. He has turned 57, so I figured because of my love for Iron Maiden and to celebrate another year in the life of Steve Harris, the principal member of the band, I figured I'd start a new discography review, this time of the almighty Iron Maiden. So I'm just going to get right to it. Uh, no time to waste. As soon as I get back to my dorm room, I'm just going to put my Aces High Eddie jacket on, and you'll expect to see that for every review because um, it's awesome. Uh, I don't care if it barely fits. Um, this is Iron Maiden we're talking about. I need to get all maidened up. So um, let's get right to it. Let's start with the first album. <laughs> Aces High Eddie jacket, so um, it obviously um, it doesn't really fit all that much anymore. I got this when I was 15, but it's the only, it's the only like article of Maiden clothing I have, so uh, yeah, anyway. So Iron Maiden by Iron Maiden is, of course, the debut album, the classic first album of this band's career. Of course, this band's been around since 1975, but um, it's not like they were doing nothing in that time frame. I mean, they, I mean, this is of course their first album in 1980, but they spent the uh, second half of the 70s like building up their success by playing in pubs and local live shows, and basically just building up the hype and attention with uh, little EPs and demos and stuff, stuff like the Soundhouse tapes. And um, that's what uh, got them the uh, major breakthrough with their first album because they were already building up their success to begin with. So the lineup on this album is quite different from the lineup on albums like Power Slave and Somewhere in Time. Here you have Paul Diano on vocals, you have Clive Burrow on drums, you have Den Stratton on guitar, uh, Dave Murray on guitar also, and you have Steve Harris, the principal member of the band, on bass. Even though the lineup on this album is different from the Golden Age albums, um, many of the songs on here rank among uh, this band's like absolute greatest hits. Just songs like Running Free, Iron Maiden, the title track, uh, Prowler, uh, Remember Tomorrow was a very underrated song along with Strange World, those are like two of my favorites, and uh, Phantom of the Opera is probably my favorite song on this album. It is the first of Iron Maiden's epics, so to speak. And this song definitely points the direction towards later songs like How Would Be Thy Name and Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. It definitely sounded a lot different from what the other New Wave of British Heavy Metal bands like Diamond Head and Samson were doing at the time, which was like, you know, more straightforward metal. Um, this band was going more towards the proggy side, oh, which is very much different from what the other bands like Saxon and Samson and Diamond Head were doing again. Um, Paul Diano claims that, oh yeah, they're going for more punk sound, but um, he's bullshitting you. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Steve Harris himself admits that he really hates punk music, so um, punk is definitely not an influence here. It's just Paul Diano with his punky voice, which, don't get me wrong, he sounds great on this album and uh, the next album, Killers, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. But yeah, this is definitely a great classic in this band's career. Um, it's not even remotely close to being my favorite Iron Maiden album. Um, but it's definitely just a very solid debut, and it's a very great start to this band. It definitely got a lot of attention, and um, it really showcased uh, what this band had to offer and really made them stand out among the rest of the new wave of British heavy metal crowd. Um, while everybody else was doing more straightforward heavy metal sound, these guys were definitely diversifying their sound more, and um, they're like finding their... Uh, basically, they're finding their footing, just finding their um, identity in the um, metal landscape that they're forging. 
For me personally, I would have to rank this album about an 8 out of 10. So yeah, classic debut from an up-and-coming classic band. So if you're looking, if you haven't heard of Iron Maiden before, if you're like one of the very few couple of people that haven't heard of Iron Maiden and want to start from the very beginning, then um, then yeah, um, definitely go with Iron Maiden, the classic debut. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next album review in this series.